All right, guys. Thank you guys for coming today. Today we have a very special guest. We have Mr. Kevin Matthew, who is in, uh, doing an MBBS in India, a recent step one passer. We had talked a little bit before he took his step one. We talked about how to help his, help him prepare last minute for his test, how to get his confidence back. And here he is today. He's passed his, exis, he's passed his exam. And now we're going to dive into exactly what he did. So Kevin, why don't you introduce yourself? Yeah, okay. Uh, so thank you, Karthik, for having me here. It's my honor to share my experience and I hope this podcast can help others also preparing alongside for step one. Uh, so to int- introduce myself, I'm a final year MBBS student in India and I recently passed my USMLE step one, just been one of the most challenging and rewarding journey in my medical career. So, so I did it along my final year because I wanted to do it before my graduation because in okay. India, okay. Uh, it is very hard to do it alongside internship. So before mm-hmm. my graduation, I had a, I wanted to give it a shot. So I prepared uh, alongside. This was your for only time you took it, right? Yeah, this was my first and only attempt. Like Okay, that's I good. That's good. It. Congrats on that. Mm-hmm. And you did this, was this the goal to take it at the end of 2024 for you? Yeah, because uh, I planned it early because I planned it in the beginning of 2024 to uh, take it around December uh, because I needed to prepare it slowly because I needed to manage my final year postings like what postings, my clinical exams alongside. So sure. it took me some time to uh, prepare for step one. Okay, okay. So talking about preparing, how did you even start preparing? When did you start too? Yeah, Okay. Uh, so my third year university exams were over by February of 2024. Okay. So after that, what I did first was that I bought an offline version of first aid. Like I bought it from Amazon. And sure. uh, I think uh, uh, I did a first pass of first aid very slowly. Like I took around like three months. Like three months I was doing the offline version of first aid. Okay. Uh, like I was not a regular daily. I couldn't do anything, but I used to... Uh, I used to spend my free time doing at least some pages of first aid. Okay. So by that, by three months, I could finish my first aid first pass. Uh, okay. So that's how I started. Uh, then I went on to UWorld. Uh-huh. Uh, UWorld, uh, I started from May, like uh, May of 2024, I started UWorld. Okay. And roughly I took UWorld for uh, six months and uh, I did it 100% and mm. my scores were good on UWorld. Like I had 55% in oh, my wow. first pass. That's really good. That's really good. So yeah. you started studying in February of 2024 for a test in December? Yeah, I started studying in February. I bought my first aid in February, but wow. for three months, I only used my first aid. Like, did, I, so I did you not have work. school that time? You were just studying? Uh, there were some time when I had uh, holidays because I had my university practical. So between oh, there were some holidays between them. Initially, there were holidays, but after that, from May onwards, I had my labor room postings. Uh, my what postings and also it was hectic at that time. Wow! Before I was done. Oh wow! So you were doing school and you're studying hard for this. Um, yeah, final year managing final year was a little bit. <laughs> wow. Mm-hmm. Um, did you do any other resources besides U World? I'm assuming you did NBMA exams, of course. Yeah. Um, anything uh, else? Um, yeah, I did like I did my pathomas like pathomas chapter one to three like definitely all okay. I think all IMDs do pathoma chapters one to three. Mm-hmm. Uh, then uh, what I did was like I used to use a YouTube a lot because I, YouTube was integral for my preparation because uh, like I used to watch Randy Neil videos like Randy Neil biostatics videos then uh, dirty medicine for ethics. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Then one mentor which I found so helpful was Hi Guru like Hi, oh, Hi Guru Hi videos. Gurus, yeah. Like that, right? yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, Dr. Rahul Davanias, he had one playlist on YouTube called High Yield and BME Concepts. Yes. And that was definitely helpful in my last phase because uh, when I didn't feel to do first year and UWorld again, I used to listen to his videos. Those mm-hmm. were really helpful at my last preparation phase. Wow. No, he's really good. He was actually on the podcast yeah. a few weeks ago. Um, we oh. had him here. And he's super yeah. smart, super smart guy. Yeah, he's a great teacher. He's a great teacher. He is. He really is. He really is. Um, okay, so you did a lot of that. Did you do sketchy? Uh, no, like uh, my all my friends told me to do sketchy, but uh, I tried to do sketchy, but uh, I found my first aid uh, micro and pharma to that be did. convincing for me. Yeah, so I didn't do sketchy. I didn't do any sketchy. Okay, okay, gotcha, gotcha. Um, anything else you did, Anki or anything? Uh, like I bought my U World flashcards. There, there was a oh, recently okay, okay. there was a change in U World called uh-huh. U World flashcards. So yeah. I. 
I got it and I did all those few old flashcards and definitely they were helpful. Like they are uh, based on some high yield concepts in you uh, old and in BME. So, so uh, I used to do around like hundred flashcards per day. So there are roughly around two thousand flashcards in you old. So mm-hmm. that also helped me in my in my preparation. Okay, okay. So that was good. That's good. Um, kind of a question that I've always wondered. Um, for IMGs, how is the test content? Is it different than what you study for your MBBS? Yeah, for IMGs, uh, coming to my Indian scenario, like we are taught uh, in my first year, second year, and third year, all those pre-clinical subjects. But uh, step one preparation is, I think, a different level because I don't think like uh, with that three years of preparation, you get you can have some base, but definitely you need the first aid material, you need the U world, you yeah. need all those uh, USMLE specific resources uh, to excel in your uh, USMLE step one because uh, I think specific materials help more than the general. Materials okay, so so what what do you learn in those three years that's different? Like, would you focus on different mm-hmm. aspects, or do you not cover USMLE content, or how how is that? Yeah, USMLE content like uh, medicine, like uh, pathology. We study anatomy, physiology, biochemistry, pathology, microbiology, and pharmacology mm-hmm. in my first and second years. So definitely the contents do overlap, but I think specifically that if you want if you want to study focus, you need to use the USMLE materials mm-hmm. because otherwise I don't think you can have a a better grasp on USMLE. Okay, so you learn it over three years, and you kind of fig- you need to relearn it for the CEO. Yeah, I, yeah, I need to relearn. Yeah, that would be better to put it out. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Got it. Got it. Um, and then kind of going into practice exams. When did you start taking them, and how many did you end up taking? Mm, okay, so my practice exams were after which uh, when I complete my U World. So. As I told, I started my U-World in May of 2024 and I completed it roughly around October. Mm. So my exams weren't different. So, and so, so my exams were in December. So mm. I roughly had around two months for my NBMEs. So I did my NBMEs 25 to 31. And 25. also my 25 to 31 and also the old uh, free 120 and the new free 120. Okay. Uh, so I did, uh, how I did my NBMEs is that way, like I used a Sunday of a week uh, to do my NBME. And the remaining days of the week, I used to review my NBME, like, and all those stuff. And and if I found any weak topics in my uh, NBME preparation, I used to mark them on first aid and relearn it better uh, oh. from any other resource which I could do. Oh, wow. That's really smart. I like that. So you went into concepts mm-hmm. you were weak on and learned them better. Yeah. That's some good. NBME concepts in which, I, in which I was weak on, I used to relearn them from first aid, you world and... Okay, so if you don't mind me asking, how were your scores in the final few tests um, before your actual yeah. test? Yeah, uh, so I started with NBMA 25, mm-hmm. and I scored only around 56 percentage in NBMA 25. Okay. So like okay. it was a little bit demotivating. So uh, then what I did was like I used to review my NBMA very much uh, uh, clearly, and I used uh, much time to review it. I used a week to review my NBMA. So like that, when I progressed uh, NBMA 25, when I got 56 percentage, then I improved. When I did my NBMA 30, I got around 66 percentage. Oh, wow. And okay. I, yeah, and last I did my NBMA 31, it was uh, roughly around 70 percentage. Good. So like I improved my NBMA scores from 56 to 70 percentage to two months, two months period. So that's good. That that's good. So, Very proud of you. Good job. Yeah. And then we'll go back a little bit in time when you reached out to me. What what were you dealing with at the time? Um, what was the issue, and then how did we overcome it, and how did you go on to pass the yeah. exam? Uh, so, like, I was preparing for, with my U World and with my uh, NBMAs, but uh, still, as I uh, is as an international medical graduate, we are all like tensed about our preparation. If it is like going in the right direction, if it mm. is adequate. Uh, so, like, my NBMA scores, as I told, initiate was in the fifty six percent So, at that time, like, I used to feel anxious because. I didn't know whether I was doing anything wrong, like I, uh, how I could improve. At that time, like I contacted you, like mm-hmm. uh, to get an idea about how how you prepared your journey. So, yeah. and it helped me, like it, it helped me so much in my journey. So I was able to regain back my confidence and mm-hmm. do much more better in my uh, succeeding in BMEs, definitely. Good, good, and this is a great story, I think, for a lot of people, IMGs especially. Don't lose confidence. That's a big thing. Yeah. I think you yeah. should really trust the process that you're improving, that you're getting better scores. Mm-hmm. Because once you lose confidence, then it's like, then 
you just don't want to push during the exam. So I'm happy you did that. Good job to you. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Um, and is there anything else in terms of your prep that maybe you did unique or different that maybe other people could benefit from? Yeah, okay. So if, uh, coming to my preparation, I think the best thing which I did was U-World because without a U-World preparation, a solid U-World preparation, I don't think that you would be feeling confident for uh, the USMLE step one. So like I started U-World and I treated it only as a learning resource. I didn't use it to assess myself because I used to score very much lower in U-World because mm -hmm. I used to score around 30 to 40 percentages in my initial uh, period and I gradually improved it to around 60. So if you are a person who is starting your world, I would definitely uh, don't consider it as a uh, assessment resource because yeah. if, if you consider it like that, you won't be feeling much content in, in yourself. Exactly. And, and also reviewing your world, I think you need to focus much on reviewing your world because I think I only did a block of 40 questions per day. But yeah. even if I did my 40 questions, I used to review them very much properly because I used to spend so much time. Initially, I think I, I took around uh, 30, uh, no, three hours to four hours reviewing uh, one block of UWorld and gradually it improved to around uh, two hours, 2.5 hours and all. So I think UWorld review and uh, content is very much important for USMLE step one as far as concerned and for my exam definitely because those stems which, which I had long stems in my UWorld, no, I had long stems in my uh, step one in my real deal. And I think without a UWorld preparation, a solid UWorld preparation, you'd be like little much de uh, deficient in your uh, preparation okay that's so great that is, that's great uh, um quick question on that did you write down notes from your world or did you do anything uh what i did was that i uh, when i used your world if i felt that some points which could be marked onto first date like easily mm -hmm. i don't think i would take a whole paragraph on, on first date but if so there are some specific points which i think i could easily write down on first aid, I would do that. I would create some flashcards, like I would just put, put some sticky notes on first aid and all. So that oh, okay. is what I did. Okay, okay, got it, got it. Thank you for that. Um, and then how was your exam day? I, I feel like a lot of people mm -hmm. always think about that. They always think it's super scary, super bad. It's gonna turn out really bad. Um, I think you said even on your test day, you it wasn't as mm -hmm. good. Um, yeah. Tell me about your test day, how it went. Yeah, so uh, my test day, like uh, as every every person, like I was too much anxious about my exam day. So, uh, but uh, I managed to do it after my first block. So my first block felt uh, really a bit, little bit hard because I don't know it is it is because of the initial uh, struggle. But my first block felt that I was failing. So what I did that after my first block, I took a break. I took a break and I went to the washroom, uh, washed my face, and came back. And I was uh, prepared to face it anyhow. Like uh, then, from my second block onwards, I could what regain back my confidence. And the seven blocks I did like pretty well. I think first block was a little bit uh, tough for me. I think it was a thing. It was I don't know why it was, but I felt it pretty tough. And remaining block it felt okay. It it felt doable. Okay, so, so it was, was kind of like getting used to the test. At the yeah, used to that. After some time, you guys okay. used to the test. So definitely, your hormones like uh, come out and. You do better, I think. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, any tips for after taking the test? Like after you take the test and you feel bad, um, I think ninety nine percent of people taking this test feel that way. Yeah, that's a that, that's a yeah. Well, well, do you have any tips that you came across, or what helped you feel better um, when you had that like um, scary thoughts? Yeah. So after the exam, uh, when I came out of my exam center, I feel that I had done not really well because. Uh, I didn't expect very long stems in my, uh, mm -hmm. my paper was full of long stems, like uh, around 40 questions in a block. I think more than 20 questions were uh, really long stems and I was used to long stems, but I didn't expect so many long stems. But sure. So I had an issue with my time management, uh, roughly like around I used to get uh, five minutes after I, I did a block of 40. So uh, after my exam, I didn't feel really good, but... Uh, I kept convincing myself and I reached out, reached out to my mentors. Like They all told me to uh, feel fine and it will be okay. So that's how I regained back my confidence after my step one. Good, good. Good job. Again, congratulations on the path. It's a big, big step yeah. forward to getting residency here. Good job. Yeah. Um, yeah. One one last thing. Um, before we end the podcast, um, we have a tradition on the podcast where a previous guest leaves a question for the current guest. Um, and then you, I'll have you leave a a uh, question for the future guest. Uh, question for you is, um, where do you see yourself 10 years from now? 
outside of medicine, what do you see yourself doing? Uh, outside of medicine. Outside of medicine, uh, so, yes. Okay. So 10 years from now, I think that uh, if I go in the US MLE pathway, I would end up in a residency in the US. Sure. And after that, I would be probably pursuing my hobbies. Like uh, I have hobbies in uh, sports and like I play badminton really very well. Oh, wow. okay. And I like to go hiking and all really? those sort of stuff. There's uh, lots like of I, hiking here. Lots of hiking. Yeah, yeah. I, I like traveling a lot. So probably I will be a, a traveling person. Like I would Good like goodness. to see, visit so many places. And I think US has a lot of places to oh, visit. Yeah. Like oh, yeah. there are a lot of, like in, 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 in India too, like it's so much uh, oh, tourist destination. Yeah. yeah. So definitely I will be spending much, uh, much of my time in travel. Like that Okay. That's great. That's yeah. great. Hopefully in 10 years, you'll be doing all of that. And maybe, hey, one day we can meet up and go travel together. Yeah, oh. sure. So why why don't you leave a question for a future guest? Is there any question you can think of um, for someone else to answer that comes on the podcast? Mm, question. Uh, so I would ask my future uh, podcaster, like, uh, uh, how about uh, what alternative pathway would have, would you have taken if not the US MLE? Like, if you had another option, like if you would have taken another pathway or, or no, wait, you would have put it a better question, I think. <laughs> no, I mean, you can do one alternative pathway to medicine, maybe. Yeah, alternative pathway to medicine. Like if you are not a medical graduate, what would have you done with your life? Like That's a good question. I, I, I feel like so many people would not have an answer because they're like, they only knew medicine. Yeah, <laughs> yeah only knew medicine. Like, I can't even imagine myself without medicine. So yeah. that's my question. That's my question. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Well, Kevin, thank you for coming on. Thank you for taking the time for coming on. Um, this mm. is going to help a lot of people, um, especially a lot of IMGs who, you know, all have similar struggles of studying for the exam, confidence for the exam before and after. I think after is a big thing a lot of people don't talk about either. And I mm. think that's something you did really well. You've achieved it, you're passed, and we're done with step one now. Yeah. Uh, so thank you, Karthik, for having me here. And once again, I I hope I could have added any value to uh, any aspirants out there preparing for step one. Thank you. Thank you, Karthik. Thank you.